Overlap and hit events are similar functions with two distinct use cases. As the names imply, the overlap events are for when an actor is overlapping us, or is no longer overlapping us, and hit events are reserved for when something has hit us, and gives us information such as the location of the hit, the actor that hit us, etc. We'll look at four examples today, one for Blueprint, one for C++, and then multiplayer friendly variations. For the first example, we have a large target board and a set of stairs. The player can only shoot the target with projectiles, showcasing the hit event, when standing on the red platform, which showcases an overlap event. In BP character example 1, you can see that it has no knowledge of any overlaps or hits in the scene. It simply draws a widget on the screen for the score, and when interact is pressed, it checks if we can fire. If we can, then it spawns a projectile and plays a sound. The overlaps and hits that control how we can score and when we can shoot is all dealt with by other actors. BP Target Overlap contains both begin overlap and end overlap events created by right clicking the box collision in the component hierarchy and selecting add event, add component begin overlap and add event, add on component end overlap. These events trigger when this component has an overlap and when that overlap ends. When begin overlap is triggered, we check to see if the other actor is BP character example one. If it is, let them know that they can shoot. We do something similar when end overlap is triggered. We check if actor leaving our overlap is BP character example one. If that is the case, we tell them that they can't shoot anymore. BP target has a large target mesh with automatically generated convex collision applied to it. Like with BP target overlap, BP target has an on component hit event generated by right clicking the static mesh actor and selecting add event, add on component hit. When the static mesh has been hit, we check to see if it was a projectile that hit the mesh. If it was, play a sound and increase our score. This second example is a like-for-like -like recreation of the first example with C++ components to help show how to achieve basic hits and collisions in C++. kfshootvolume.h is where our overlaps are dealt with in example 2. Within the .h you can see the declarations for the two overlap functions. The specific functions are at the bottom of the class. Both of the functions are designed to take in what the internal overlap delegates push out so that we can correctly understand the delegate and act upon it accordingly. To see how we make these functions trigger when the overlap happens, we need to switch over to kfshootvolume.cpp. If we take a look inside the begin play function, we can see that we get the components we wish to listen to the overlaps on and add IU functions to the delegates that will be broadcast. But looking at the first of the two lines of code, what we're doing is getting the box component and getting the delegate for begin overlap. From here, we are telling the delegate that we wish to be informed when it's fired. We do this by telling it to execute a function in our class, and specifically we want it to trigger the overlap begin function. Because of what the delegate will broadcast, in terms of variables, matches with that function, it will correctly pass through the data and execute our function when the delegate is triggered. One important trick to know is the ability to find out what variables are needed for that bind to correctly take place. One trick is to write out the add dynamic code, which in our begin overlap case is box on component begin overlap add dynamic and head to the definition of on component begin overlap by clicking on on component begin overlap and pressing F12 in Visual Studio or Rider. This should take you to the delegate that's being sent through. Go to the declaration of the delegate, remember F12 is a hotkey, and you'll see the function that we need. Simply copy the variables and paste them into the function declaration of our intended U function. Be sure to remove the extra commas that are added as part of the delegate declaration and your function now matches the delegate and will be compatible with the delegate broadcast. The location of our add dynamic is important to note as well. Adding them to the constructor means that what we're trying to bind to is not ensured to be ready yet and can often lead to crashes. Because of this, you should place binds such as overlaps, hits and similar such delegate bindings on begin play which fires once the game has started and this object has been created. In our functions for overlap begin and overlap end, we are doing the same thing we did back in the blueprint sample. We check to see if the actor that triggered this overlap is the player. If they are, then set if they can or can't shoot. As we've said a few times before this, hits and overlaps share some commonalities, especially when it comes to how they broadcast to other classes. C++ hits are no exception. We can see this with the declaration of our hit function within kfshoottarget.h, which is strikingly similar to how we handled overlaps in the previous class, specifically the part at the end of the class, the hit function itself. To fully understand the variables provided, we can head over to the CPP file to see something similar to what we had when dealing with the overlaps. Just like with the overlaps, 
On begin play, we are grabbing the component we want to listen out for hits on, then we are grabbing the hit delegate. We're adding our U function to trigger when this delegate broadcasts. Again, it is important to remember the why we've put this on begin play and not on the constructor, as well as how to find the variables the delegate function requires to be present to correctly broadcast to our function. These are covered in the overlap section, so jump back if you need a refresher. Just like with the blueprint, this is inspired by, in example one, when the hit has been broadcast to us. We are checking to see if it was a projectile. If it was, play a sound, increment our score, and update the score in places that are waiting for it. Example 3 is similar to the first two examples, but with slight tweaks to better show alternative options, and to offer something a little different. This is a simple multiplayer sample, where one player needs to step on the green trigger to make the target appear. The other player then stands on the red trigger, and is able to shoot the target. If the player successfully hits the target, both players will see the chair in the test tube lights on fire for 3 seconds. First we can look at BP target overlap red to show an example approach for multiplayer overlap. Inside the graph you can see a method similar to what we have done previously. Within BP target overlap red we have overlap begin and overlap end events. From here we are casting to the character and setting off a specific event, in this case for enable or disable shooting. The main difference this time is that we're speaking directly to the client's version of the character in a multiplayer match as opposed to just whatever version overlaps with us. The reason for this is to protect against a slow network and to ensure this event is correctly fired on both client and server. If you follow the event that's fired on the player character, you'll see that we update the client's variables first and then we go off and tell the server. Naturally, this method is not very secure, but ensures that when playing online, the person playing as the client doesn't have to wait around for the server's response before acting, reducing the feeling of lag. If we take a look, at BP target overlap green, we can see an alternative approach to overlaps in multiplayer. Within this blueprint, we immediately send the result of begin overlap and end overlap to the server to deal with. The server then decides what to do, which in this case is confirm it's an example 3 character that caused the overlap to trigger and then tell both the server and client version of that character to play the show or hide animation on the target actor, which ironically in this case is an actual target. BPMP target is our multiplayer version of the target that existed within the previous examples. You'll see that the approach taken is quite similar to the previous examples, only instead this time we're triggering a server event at the end of the on component hit execution line. There is some extra nodes this time around in the blueprint, but those only exist to add animation to this actor and are not related to making this class more multiplayer friendly. Example 4 is the C++ version of the third example, which you can use to understand how to achieve what we did in example 3 within the confines of C++. The overlaps in C++ are done just as example 3 did it, where KF, MP, overlap red and overlap green perform their networking in slightly different ways. The interesting one I wanted to draw attention to is overlap green, as it deals with the networking as part of the overlap flow. Within the .h file, you'll notice that both begin overlap and end overlap are written exactly how they were in example 2. Just like with example 3, we now have a server check overlap function, which we will pass our overlap response in for the server to deal with. Heading over to the CPP, you can see that we bind our overlaps exactly as we did before. However, when we look at the implementation of our functions, you can see we immediately call the server check overlap, just like we did in example three. It's a little less clear here why we're doing this. So to reiterate, this is an example of a server authoritative overlap, where we immediately tell the server, Hey, this overlap happened, can you make a judgement call on what to do please? If you're not used to multiplayer coding in Unreal Engine, some keen eyed amongst you might have noticed that we defined our server check overlap as server check overlap. However, in the CPP file, it's server check overlap implementation. This comes from the U function we attach to our function, or more specifically the server macro. Unreal does magic behind the scenes with the defaults for this function, giving us not just an implementation, but if required, you could also do things like validation where the server has to verify if this function can even occur in the first place. It is strongly recommended to check out some of the properties you can attach to your U functions and U properties, especially when multiplayer replication is concerned. A great resource for this is either the official Unreal Engine documentation or Ben UI's blog, which will be linked in the description. The hit in C++ is done from KFMP shoot target. In shoot target.h, you can see we defined our hit mesh function just as we did in the offline sample. Within shoottarget.cpp, you can see that we bind the hit and begin play before we set up the timeline alternative. It doesn't matter when the order the specific bind for hit happens, as long as the actor is ready and we're in game. When the hit is triggered from hit mesh, we check the bullet like we did in example 3 and fire off the server event on that bullet. 
As always, if you'd like the project files or a written version of this guide, please check out katatus.github.io.